So which one do you think has the chalk tip? Mm, this one. This one. I'll choose this one. I'll choose this one. Now that there's only two, hmm. you could either stay with your choice, okay, or switch. I think I'll stay with this one only. Why'd you switch? Uh, I don't know. I just did it. I think I'll stick with this one. I'll stick with this. What? I'll still go with the same one. Why so? Just a random decision. Bayes' theorem frequently produces results that are in stark contrast to our intuitive understanding. For example, take the case of the famous Monty Hall problem. The Monty Hall problem gets its name from an American TV show, Let's Make a Deal, hosted by Monty Hall. Suppose you are on the game show and you are given the choice of three doors. Behind one door is a car, behind the others, goats. You pick a door, say number one, and the host, Monty Hall, who knows what's behind the doors, opens another door, say number two, which has a goat, and reveals it to you. He then asks you, do you want to pick door number three? Do you want to switch your initial choice? What do you think? Does it matter if you switch? As I told you, this problem is quite interesting because the answer, as felt by most people, including mathematicians, is very counterintuitive. For most of us, the solution is immediately obvious, and that is, it doesn't matter whether we switch or not. But in reality, it matters. As I told you, the correct solution is quite counterintuitive. Let's apply Bayes' theorem to Monty Hall problem now. If you recall, we are told that behind three doors, there are two goats and a car, all randomly placed. We initially chose a door and then Monty, who knows what's behind the doors, always shows us a goat behind one of the remaining doors. He can always do this as there are two goats. If we choose car initially, Monty picks up one of the two doors with a goat behind it at random. Assume we pick door 1 and then Monty shows us a goat behind door 2. Now let A be the event that car is behind door 1 and B be the event that Monty shows us a goat behind door 2. As you know, P of A is equal to 1 by 3 and P of B given A is the probability Monty opens door 2 given car is behind door 1, which is the door you picked. Since Monty has two choices of two goat doors to open in this scenario, the probability he opens door 2 will be 1 by 2. The tricky calculation is of P of B. Remember, we are assuming we initially chose door 1. It follows that if the car is behind door 1, Monty will show us a goat behind door 2 half the time. If the car is behind door 2, Monty will never show us a goat behind door 2. Finally, if the car is behind door 3, Monty shows us a goat behind door 2 every time. Thus, P of D will be equal to half into 1 by 3 plus 0 into 1 by 3 plus 1 into 1 by 3. That's nothing but half. So using Bayes theorem, we know P of A given B will be equal to P of D given A multiplied by P of A divided by P of D. If I substitute the numbers here, I'll get the value as 1 by 2 into 1 by 3 divided by 1 by 2. That's 1 by 3. The car is either behind door 1 or door 3. And since the probability that it's behind door 1 is 1 by 3 and the sum of the probabilities must be equal to 1, the probability the car is behind door 3 is 1 minus 1 by 3, that's 2 by 3. You could apply Bayes' theorem directly also, but this method is simpler. So Bayes' theorem tells us that we should switch as our probability of winning a car jumps from 1 by 3 to 2 by 3. Now that you watched the video, what do you think? I think I'll switch to this one. I guess switching would be a better option, so I'll go with this. Yeah, I'll switch. I'll switch from this to this. I'd like to switch. I'll uh, go to this one. Go ahead. Pick it up. Okay. 
Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. Got it. Nice. Got it.